Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Railway Empire where we're going to be tackling the Outback. Well, not the Outback, the south southeastern corner of Australia. We, it might be some of the Outback. The Outback is the this bit, right? <laughs> the the, the uh, nothing nothinginess. Anyway, yes, that's what we're doing. It's a tough one, this, and slightly different. We'll talk more about it once we get going. Uh, needless to say, it is completely different to our pre, our previous outing in where were we? <laughs> Northern Europe. Yes, with the snow, none of that. Pretty sure there is snow in Australia, but yeah, it, that, that's not part of it. It's completely different. We have no AI competitors for a start. Everything is against the clock. It's a toughie. Uh, I have played it a bit, well, a lot. This was supposed to be out much sooner than it was, but uh, Texas weather being what it what it is, we uh, we had to delay it a little bit. So there we go. Rain stop play. Shall we get on with it? Meticulous planning, tables. Ah, oh, hello. How did you end up here? What was that? Railroads. Here in the middle of nowhere. You must have suffered a heat stroke. Well, since you're here, there are actually a few things a railroad might prove helpful with. But heed my warnings and don't come running to me if you fail. Well, Crocodile Dundee there is a cheerful chap. It only just dawned on me he looks a little bit like Crocodile Dundee. Well, there you go. I've got it in uh, track construction mode. Because No, don't take it out. Good start. Good start. Because timing on this one is tight. Funds are tight. You would think it was easier, right? No AI. This is the area. You'll see we've got regions as well. However, we've got an extra button here. Unlock settlements, which you get as you increase your population there. I, would, I wasn't sure if it would stay paused. We really can't allow time to progress too much. As you can see, we've got to reach a population of uh, 259,964 great number why not and that will allow us to unlock our first settlement which you kind of do as you progress at the beginning you can see them highlighted here oh how do you pronounce that am i reading that right is that double r warnambol warnambol i honestly thought being in australia i might stand a chance at some of the pronun pronunciations bendigo Dimbula, Swan Hill. Well, there we go. There's, there's a nice and easy one. Oh, oh no. Ichusa? Ichuka? <laughs> well, all mate. Well, Melbourne. We know that one. Ballarat. I'm sure that's close enough. Anyhow, yes. Shall we get on with it? We will set up the uh, our initial routes. And in fact, we'll buy uh, everything we need to buy as well on the get-go i'm going with this guys i know i know sometimes i do this and it all falls <laughs> it all falls down rather quickly not i'm gonna say i'm risking it and that's that's how we'll go with it we're gonna have to be careful with the uh terrain here it is rough you thought it was rough in uh in northern europe in our last outing however you you're forced to go through some of these uh, more so down by the uh, east coast than the, the south coast here which makes it interesting not anyway we'll start with these top ones and try and get them lined up nicely we are going to buy us some factories from the get-go as well the reason being is that's where you're going to make a lot of your money we're also going to make sure that we double track from the start oh you've done it in the wrong place to be fair mr t we actually want this in the bottom ones. The reason being is for later expansion. Like I said, I've already had a tinker around with it. Loved it. I couldn't wait to uh, play it uh, with you guys. Which is what we're doing. I don't know what's going on there. That's Oh, I see. Yeah, that's not required, is it? We might need to uh, come down here early on. We want to avoid spending too much money when we start out because money is very difficult to come by in this scenario i've noticed until you get going later 
The reason I'm, I'm also the industrialist, the reason is settlements, they tend not to have an industry attached to them. Anyway, Since buy the first this. settlements were founded Thanks. just over 40 years ago, <laughs> not much has changed here. Do you really think that a few tracks will change anything? Yeah, well, I'm hoping so. Mr. Dundee, Mick Dundee, wasn't it? I think. Yes. My my memory is hazy when it comes to Crocodile Dundee. Anyway, I'll avoid doing my uh, Australian accent because, well, you've seen my accents. <laughs> They're not good at all. I'm not even good at my own. Okay, we're in. We've got this bit done. Let's get a train running on this route, except we're just going to have these doing passengers. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm going with. We start off with the grasshopper. We're in 1830. Now that that's running, what we need to do immediately before we do all this. Wow, we got the Hancock. That's a bit of RNG. That's lovely. I will say when I was testing it, I got no office staff. I got one dude until I think 1875. I got a second person in, in the office, which is awful luck. But anyway, here's our tasks. Connect two cities. That's the first thing we did. Um, three rural businesses, which is tricky to say the very least. And this one tends to only happen if we get a promoter. So we've got to make sure we've got enough funds left over to get a promoter. What I do want to do is buy these out because they're cheap. And we've got to rely quite heavily on uh, businesses around the map. I will not take the fish. They, as you'll see, these are pricey, even when they're running at 0%. I mean, I didn't buy these optimally either. Uh, we can probably grab this one as it's cheap. It doesn't get any less than 28.5%, uh, I don't think, as it's supplying goods via wagons there. Okay, so we got this in. This place here, awkward. Uh, you'll see why and why I'm going for a large train station as well. Signal controlled. Look at the state of that. It's right on the hill. I mean, you can't really judge the uh, the lay of the land with the contours. You can get a rough idea, but it's not very apparent until you actually go down here. And that will mess up your tracks, that slope there. You've got to be very careful where we lay this down. Ideally getting past this thick contour line here. The reason I am going for the large over the small is because we can go a little further away. You see there we only get down to just past the thick line, which is okay. However, if we use the large one, you'll see we can get right down here and out the way. The question is, can I get it in? Because we're right on a, on a slopey, slopey slope there, which I don't want to be. We'll have to zoom out. Oh, it, it's really tight. This is the best place for it. We can kind of go that way and sit with the contours a little bit. If you hold shift and control together, you can get a, a fine adjustment. That's it. Right click is not good, though, when you're trying to do this. <laughs> right. Get it in there. Come on. Come on, Grand. You can do it. There are some parts where it, it just won't build it. Right. We got Kelly Manor in thankfully you'll notice the music is different for our outing this time around really have i built that on a stupid slope oh yeah well oh yeah you can see there can you see it dropping down it's not a real slope it's not a real slope right get rid of it luckily we get a refund it does bug me though the way it lays these they should be more like transport fever where it uh ideally where it terraform so i don't know where to put this i'm pretty sure that would have been ideal we just need it to not sit on that slope too much but we're really short on space i wonder if that will do it let's just try because otherwise we're going to be faffing around with it there we go there we go right we got it i don't want to be faffing around with it too much it is a bit like that though we're going to have to do a lot of that otherwise you're paying too much for a start slopes are evil and the early trains just cannot handle anything past three percent uh, once you get later on and you get the uh, beefier trains you're fine and we want to keep this to an absolute minimum the costs 
it doesn't seem like it at the moment. You're like, Grand, you've got loads of money to play with. At the moment, yes. We soon run out. Uh, we are going to double track this immediately. I mean, it doesn't help that I'm spending money like water doing all this. <laughs> you can see our funds are already low. We haven't even got repair sheds in yet. We do have water towers though, so that's something. Yeah, I can't wait to show you the... Uh, it happens fairly early on. The, uh, the settlements, I'm really looking forward to that. And it's a fun mechanic as well. I hope they introduce that to some of the other playthroughs. Uh, certainly the US would would benefit from something like settlements. So we've got that running. We're going to need to get some trains running soon. But I would like to, if possible. Can we afford it? We can't afford it. We're going to have to take out our first loan. Oh, not yet. That's not a lot, is it? I'll tell you what then. We'll get this running. And we're going to do it like this. We can use Ballarat to uh, repair our trains for journeys through here. There is no way we can go through there. Our trains crawl to about 3% if we try to do mountain railways and tunneling is just far too expensive early on. But anyway, this will deal with all of our freight. We do get the John Hancock early on, which is absolutely marvellous. And uh, we own this, so we're going to get some money there as well. We should, at the beginning, do this while we can afford it. It's going to be needed by all of our routes. We're going to do the same with our fish. Well, it's seafood. There you go. We've got part of our surf and turf there. And then we've got, we got more up there. Uh, what have we got building-wise in here? We've got a meat industry. They do some lovely steaks there. To go with your seafood, there's your surf and turf. And here we have... Beer and yeast extract. So you get two for one there. Or one from... Two from one, even. Not two for one. There we go. Grain to those two. We have someone straight away. I'm going to concentrate on power to help them with our slopes. Uh, unfortunately, these little trains are fairly cheap to buy. And they will start making us a bit of money. We'll go with this one and zoom in and look at our little train there. There it is. I wonder why uh, these were called the grasshoppers. I mean, the, this one isn't. It's the John Hancock, but it's obviously taken its inspiration. It's, I believe it's almost a um, grasshopper with a cab over it, and that's about the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Look at his little... The boiler's upright. That didn't last long, did it? No. Laying down is all you see now with steam trains. But we have our little train. We can, once he gets there and gives us a bit of a payout, oh, here we go. We can upgrade. Sure, increase the reliability. Is that? Uh, increases the reliability by 6%. Why we're in here, let's take a look at the research tree. Completely different to our previous outing. There we go. We can just go all the way to the end. Yes, there's no, uh, there's no gated years. It's gated by how fast you expand. And if we look there, there's the, there's the one we're aiming for, this express train here. Is that a diesel? I don't know. It could be a steam train. It looks very diesel-esque, doesn't it? Like an early, early diesel. Maybe it's a combination of the two. But anyway, enough of that. We're nowhere close to affording it. Where's our train gone? Oh, he's off. <laughs> he's, he's already gone. Let's duplicate you while we can afford it this is more money coming in each delivery we do have repair stations already set up you'll see we've got no competitors none there now i am not clever enough to play this stock market <laughs> i just don't understand stocks at all it seems like you could maybe make a little bit out of that buying it before you do stuff i mean when they're low, you buy them, right? And when they're high, you sell them. That's about as much as I know. But trying to predict the curve is something I don't want to get involved in. Anyhow, well, I mean, we'll take that because we've got to set up the uh, seafood run as well. And the same thing's going to happen here. We're going to run with the, as you can see here, there is more to go on that side that we're going to have to feed. 
So we're going to run this parallel with the coast. Now, a little ways away from the river there. Obviously because uh, the game doesn't like to go across from a station to a river. And we'll run this one all the way up there. I guess we want to be on the inside. We're not going to double track this one. No, we're going to partially double track that one. As funds are going to start getting a bit tight. And there is no factory that uses uh, seafood. Not that I know of early on anyway. That's a good price, isn't it? I don't mind that. We could maybe tidy it up a little bit. Uh, no, we don't want bridges, that's for sure. I mean, we could have gone up a little bit there. But I'll take that. It's not too bad. We're not double tracking, as I said. And we've left this one open. So if we put uh, a bit of track here, about the halfway point, a little over, then we've got room for a, a teensy bit of double tracking and a place to put a, an extra water tower when we can afford it. The first thing we should do is get this up and running. There we go. Get that like that. That will handle all their freight needs, which is why we have separate passenger runs, because these guys are going to do all the freight rather than mixed goods. Later on, that will make a little bit more sense. It's a bit of a different approach I'm going for uh, this time around. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, money's tight at the beginning. I, I want to avoid too many loans to start with. There we go. We've got our seafood underway. What I want to spend it on is getting this achievement here. I'm really hoping we get a promoter. As 1834 is a toughie. We need to think about what we'll unlock, though. If we click on this, you'll see. It'll unlock the cows. Currently, the uh, farm over here is not available. It's not part of the game. Unlocking this unlocks that. Same for these greyed out ones here. I like this one because it gets meat into play straight away. Why I tend to go for that one. This one's a good one as well. Echusa? Echuca? Echuca. Oh dear, Pikachu. No, that's not what it is. That will unlock uh, sugar beet, which is... Fairly low on the list of requirements, so it's it's used early. But uh, since we've already got a meat producing facility down here, we may as well unlock that and get it running. There it is up there. Well, I mean, that's all we can do for now. I'm going to duplicate you again, unless it's already in the station. It's not, because I, I would like it to be spread out. As much as possible. I know he's already going up there. Uh, you'll see that he'll drop off all of his goods pretty much. And just head up there empty. Which I'm expecting. However we're going to do. Oh we've got an accountant. Distracted already. That is lovely. Oh new locos. Please. I didn't get any of this. This early on last time. I played it. That's not fair. I <laughs> must this is the luck of the dice, isn't it? Dice rolls. What I'm going to do, because he's running empty and we don't need him to, is a little tactic that you, you tend to use in this uh, scenario. And that is delete trains and then respawn them. I should have maybe duplicated him first, but anyway. Uh, you've done it now. The reason being is you've got to make deliveries to the, to the settlements when you're building them. This is a good start though, fairly solid start. I do want to get this connection in. We're going to make a temporary connection just up to Kelly Manor to start with so we can get the achievement of the task completed. And how is our money looking now? Can we take... Yes, there we go. This is what I was waiting for. I wanted it a little over 300,000 so we can afford to do this and then delete it back. We might keep it in there. Um... But first off, I just want the... No, we're not going to keep it in there. We are going to delete it. I'd really like the task completed first. And then we'll worry about anything else. Well, I mean, you don't have to do this. But we should get a rough idea of where this is going to go. 
and when we do get around to building it and it's not going to cost us too much we don't need that excessive bridge i don't think we can maybe go somewhere like that instead or i don't know it's not too bad is it it's actually a, quite a bit cheaper and shorter just there we might keep that in to be fair i don't know now we're not using this one though but yeah, let's get the task here we go gold tick transport you really need you seem determined i do seem determined mick but uh yeah we've got to get this done well, we don't. I mean, a green tick is fine, but you can struggle on, on just a green tick. Do we want to keep this hooked up then? It's a journey, isn't it? That's the problem. I mean, it's an absolute journey. We could be using that money on what exactly, Mr. T? Do you know what? We might as well keep it in. And in fact, we're going to redo it from that point there because the rest of it was rather nice. But we're going to set our stall out and get it in. There we go. We do own it, so we're going to make a decent bit of money off it. And we want that inside one, I believe. Yes. And then hopefully that connects up nice. Look at that. Lovely. We will need a halfway point here. We're going to be on this inside, as that's where we'll be connecting up later to fully double track it. This is just so we can have more than uh, a single train running this line. Well, in fact, we can have two trains running this line. I mean, technically, you could have more because they can wait at these signal controlled stations. That way we can get wood going, can't we? And if we can get wood going, uh, that'll be a good start. We could always stop them at Kelly Manor if, uh, if maintenance requirements are an issue. But then we'd have to buy a maintenance building on here, which we cannot afford. We are, we are now broke. Pretty much. So let's get this running. It's going to be tough. We're going to do the same thing, mainly to make use of the uh, single maintenance building we have. How things have changed, right? Compared to our last one. I feel like this is a, a good gamble. Well, firstly, we're going to make a bit of money from our logging camp here. Secondly, it will help this third task down here. Because we absolutely can't do it without a promoter if you don't hook this up. There's just uh, not enough growth. And we're going to have to keep duplicating these as well. Uh, a maintenance engineer might be great on this long run. What does he do? He reduces maintenance requirements by 20%, which is quite a lot. So the lower the maintenance requirement, the better. So this would be make it, what, 47%? Uh, I Right, that's good to know. I think we figured that out in the previous uh, series. But I do keep thinking higher is better when I believe lower is better. Probably the same for consumption as well. Right, we can duplicate another one of these. Hopefully, oh, it's not bad timing, is it? He's filling up there. Let's get another one of those running. We're going to need a lot to keep up with this we can't afford to upgrade it so don't even look uh, we, we're getting a sprinkle of grain through there we're not getting enough fish or seafood at the moment uh, fine we're going to need a second one of those so when when we can where's our fisheries one are you on the way back no you've just got there this would be ideal where's fisheries there who is it norris Norris Fisheries. We need to get this up and running as soon as we can afford it. It's going to cost us 28000 Thankfully, we got that member of office staff who has made this a little bit more bearable. Although, funds are tight. This is how this one starts. I believe we were in a similar situation, though, when we were up in the, the snowy mountains. Of where did we start out with? It wasn't Norway, Sweden, wasn't it? That's where we started out. It was a bit rough, wasn't it? <laughs> just, just a little bit. Pretty similar to how this one starts out. Except it's not snow. It's nothing for miles. Look at it. Because we haven't set up a lot of the cities. There's only a few of the cities that uh, start around here. If we take a look. Uh, obviously, we've got our Melbourne and Ballarat there. We've also got up here, Wollongong, 
Here we go. Sydney. Uh, Newcastle. There's one I do know. Uh, Port. Port. Mercury. That's what I'm going with there. <laughs> Brisbane. There we go. I mean, I know some of these from my days watching Home and Away and Prisoner Cellbot 8. <laughs> what else was there? Home and Away, Prisoner Cellbot, Sons and Daughters. That was on as well, wasn't it? Uh, I wasn't personally. Oh, was I? I probably did watch uh, Home and Away. Oh dear. I'm admitting everything now. What are you? What are you taking? Grain? Have you run out? Ooh, we might be running low and we can't upgrade. No, we're fine. Uh, no, I know what it is because we're doing multi-drops. He obviously is taking some of that grain. We have an upgrade and it will be power. Unfortunately, our research is all the way down there. But there we go. That's nice, isn't it? 4% increase in power across the board. All trains. Uh, we do have a second one of those now, which is lovely. Who are you waiting for? It's going to get busy here straight away. Now you can see why I go at the beginning for this. Signal controlled station. Because trying to manage the platforms, you could per line and spread them evenly. However, if two on the same line turn up together and there's a free platform... Making use of this obviously means that both of those trains, even though they're on the same line, can use separate platforms. I can see why people would like this in Transport Fever. It's been talked about. We got uh, increased profits from mail, which isn't really going to affect us the most. I will take it, though, as uh, that one uh, would have been this, which is a tough one to get. That's a That's a bargain. How many have we got running this now? We have four, four running that. Is that enough? Are you getting enough grain? You kind of not. You already want sugar. Oh, it's sugar cane, not sugar beet. My bad. Yeah, so you're going to need more. I bet they're not getting enough uh, wood either. These guys are. But are you getting any uh, trickle through? A little, a little. Oh, we are on the rise, though, in Ballarat. That's nice. That's possibly because of this logging train. In which case, I would like to uh, get another one running. I think that'll be handy. You'll see he's taking beer back because we're starting to feed it plenty of grain. We have our settlement. As you might have noticed, there's one thing in oh, here goes. abundance. A lot of untapped wilderness. Oh, wow, we did it, guys. Ever I'm impressed so with myself. Enough people accumulated in the existing towns that we may try to establish a new settlement. Yes, settlements, yes. Since the credit is yours to a large extent, you also deserve the honour to decide on the new location for the settlement. First of all, you should take a closer look at one of the possible settlement sites. Okay, Mick. <laughs> As you can see, now that we've got this one unlocked, our next population goal has increased. So we've got 291,346. Random numbers are random. There must be a reason that it's these. Finally balanced, I would imagine. We have one permit available now to unlock. And as he said, we want to choose... A settlement. You see the connected businesses. I do. They're not active Mick. yet, but that will change stop as soon as Mick. a new town is built. So do not treat this decision lightly, and do not forget to confirm your choice. I will not. Now another reason why I am choosing Bendigo. I don't know how that's pronounced. I'm gonna guess it's close. Bendigo, mate. No, okay. No Australian accent. Because I'm. That was awful. Okay, what are we doing? Yes, another reason why I'm choosing this is because it's close to our existing network. This one is too. Um, however, it's a long distance from fish, our closest fish down here. And that's all we've got. Our other fish supply is up from, uh, where would that be? Closer to the east. And not accessible at the moment. So this is our only option. This is the closest. We do have a little one down here. But it doesn't unlock anything of of use to us. Uh, the wine there 
isn't useful until much later in the game. So we'll get this one and we'll purchase. Excellent. You established a new settlement. For the moment, there's nothing else to do here. Right, and as you can see, we got four new In tasks. Order for the settlement to become a town, <laughs> your help is required. Thank you. Firstly, select the new settlement. Okay, we're supposed to be back in here. Hey, there we go. Have I broke it? Here, you may there check the required commodities. Only if you deliver all of them will the settlement become a town. Now, yeah, there you go. I love this side of it. Uh, let's get into build mode for a second so we can pause it. So we'll probably end the episode there. So that when we come back, what we'll do is we'll be getting Bendigo growing from a small settlement with a few, uh, what have they got there? A few tents. That's a, all they start out as. You can't deliver anything else to them. They don't have a city page, nothing like that. Uh, all they are, a little encampment that you have to provide and turn it into one of these. I love that. I love it. I absolutely, when I first saw it, I was a little confused. It's like, what's going on here? Because it hasn't been seen before. But now, I love it. I love it. And you can make a bit of money supplying it as well. And we'll be visiting the little trick that is almost definitely necessary. Maybe, perhaps. And there might be better players out there, more than highly likely, uh, who can get away with having them running. But I don't see any need in having them running. And we'll talk more about that once we establish it. So I guess we'll uh, end there and go for a little ride. And I'll uh, do our little save so we can jump on one of our John Balls. All right, guys, thanks for joining me for episode one. There is a lot to do. I love the, the, the scenery out there. So vast. This map is huge as well. A lot to do in southeastern Australia. And... Uh, we're back on board trains, aren't we? Which is always enjoyable. We're only chugging along at 15 miles an hour. I'm not going to demonstrate what happens at over 3%. Needless to say, it is rough. It's got a bit overcast. That's unfortunate. Where's the sun go? Or is that my eyes? <laughs> I don't know. Did that get dull for everyone else? Anyway, when we come back, Bendigo. We've got to uh, get them growing and turning into a... Our first uh, city that wasn't on the map at the start. And then we can get our population increasing and head towards our next task, which uh, I'm looking forward to. All right, guys, until then, take care.